Alright, hi again. This time we're going to try to find some uh, sine and cosine values by hand using some simple geometry. Now this only works for a few special angles, so uh, we'll look at the ones that it does work for. First, let's try to find something like sine of 45 degrees. Okay, you may think, uh, alright, reach for the calculator, but no, there's actually a way to find this geometrically. And it's pretty simple. So I'm just going to draw a right triangle, and uh, for this right triangle we want the angles to be 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and 45 degrees. Now you should know that all of the angles of, of any triangle have to add up to 180 degrees, and so you know when you have a right triangle that one of those angles is already 90 degrees, so the sum of the other two angles has to equal 90 degrees as well. Um, so what this means is when you know that one of the angles is 45 degrees, you know that the other angle is also 45 degrees. Alright, pretty simple. Now the cool thing about having a triangle where the angles are the same measure, uh, that tells you that the length of their sides are the same measure. So what this means is that we can go ahead and write, uh, label this side as x, but also label this side as x. Alright. And then let's label the hypotenuse as something like 1. Pretty simple. So we know that sine of, of 45 degrees is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So if you can look at either of these angles, the opposite side is still going to be x, so the numerator is x, and then the denominator, the hypotenuse, is just 1. This means that sine of 45 degrees is our value x, so that is x. So if we can find x, then we can figure out what sine of 45 degree is, degrees is. So finding x is actually pretty simple. We just go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem. I think I'll use red. <laughs> so x squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. 2x squared equals 1. 1 squared is just 1. x squared equals 1 half. Now we take the square root. We know it's a positive square root because uh, it's the length of a triangle, and that can't be negative. Uh, so square root of 1 half, we can go ahead and distribute the square root. Square root of 1 is just 1, and then the square root of 2, we'll write that as square root of 2. So we found that uh, x is 1 over the square root of 2. And now uh, we can finish this off and write, all right, I figured out that sine of 45 degrees. Since we decided that sine of 45 degrees is just whatever we got for x, we know that sine of 45 degrees is 1 over the square root of 2. So, there you go. Pretty cool, huh? Let's move on to one other triangle that is going to give us actually two angles that we can uh, find sine and cosine values of pretty easily using a uh, using basic geometry. So this time we want to find something like sine of 30 degrees. Okay, so the way you approach this is uh, a little bit more involved than the 45 degree uh, one, but all you do is you draw one large equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle is a triangle where the length of all three sides is uh, equal. In other words, all, all three sides are the same length. Now, when all three sides are the same length, that tells you that all three angles are the same length. Now, the sum of all three angles has to be 180 degrees, so you know that the measure of one of those angles is going to be 180 degrees divided by 3, which is 60 degrees. So we can label just one of these angles as 60 degrees. Okay? I'm also going to label one of these sides. Well, in doing so, I will be labeling all of the sides, but I'll say that each side of this equilateral triangle is 1. Or, sorry, each side of the equilateral triangle is 2. And you'll see why it's advantageous to use 2 in just a moment. So now, what we want to do is we want to find sine of 30 degrees. And all we have are 60 degree angles here. We also don't even have a right triangle. Now fortunately, you observe that if we cut one of these 60 degree angles in half, then we'll form a 30 degree angle. So if we draw an altitude, of an altitude is just a line that goes from one vertex of a triangle to the other side of the triangle. So see this blue line that I just drew? 
and this makes a right angle down with the other side. And now this angle, I think I'll do this in red just to be consistent. This angle of the new triangle is 30 degrees. So that's pretty easy. It's also easy to see that uh, we can now label another side of this right triangle. Remember that we knew that the length of this entire side of the tri of the equilateral triangle was 2. And then we divided that equilateral triangle side in half. So we know that the length of this guy is half of the length of the equilateral triangle, which will just be 1. OK, I'm going to erase the rest of the equilateral triangle since we don't really want to worry about it anymore. We're just worried about the right triangle. And now, you'll see that we have enough information to figure out what sine of 30 degrees is. We know sine of 30 degrees is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite of 30 degrees is 1, and the hypotenuse is 2. All right? Very simple. You see why it was a good idea to use 2 as the hypotenuse? Because it makes this side of the triangle a nice whole uh, number, since 1 is an integer, so that's kind of convenient. There, sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Now we haven't even finished solving this triangle, and we can already find sine of 30 degrees. But what if we want to find sine of 60 degrees? I mean, wouldn't that be kind of swell, huh? Be nice if we could find another another one of these values. Uh, fortunately, we can. This might have jumped out to you. When you have a right triangle, uh, if you know two of the sides, you can always find the other tr the other side of the triangle when it's a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'll label this blue side as x, our good old unknown x. And then write out the Pythagorean theorem. 1 squared plus x squared equals 2 squared. So x squared equals 4, which is 2 squared, minus 1, or 1 squared, which is just 1. Therefore, x squared equals 3. And we know x equals the positive square root of 3. So now I'll erase x and instead write square root of 3 in its place. So now we've solved this 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And it's pretty easy to see what sine of 60 degrees is. We know sine of 60 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite of 60 degrees is square root of 3. The opposite side of 60 degrees. And the hypotenuse is 2. So there we go. Let's write this. Uh, let's write both of these up here, actually. Nice summary. So sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. OK, so we found sine of 60 degrees, sine of 30 degrees, and sine of 45 degrees. Oops, well, whatever. So this is what we found. Now, you could also find cosine of 45 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees, and cosine of 60 degrees. I'm not going to do that in the video so that you have an opportunity to try it out for yourself if you'd like. If you don't want to, that's fine. You don't have to. But if you'd like to you know, check your understanding of cosine, uh, go ahead and see if you can uh, use these special triangles whose sides we uh, figured out using geometry and see if you can figure out what cosine of 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 45 degrees is. So good luck with that, and thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you guys next time.